Hey, thanks for stopping by the Watercolor Methods YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe so you'll find out when we've got something new posted for you to watch. And maybe check out our website, watercolormethods.com, where we've got over 200 full-length, in-depth watercolor lessons and tutorials that you might like. In the meantime, let's take a look at this lesson. Now the drawing layout is downloadable from that link above. Most of my layouts are pretty simple like this one. I indicate larger areas. I do make indications of things like those details on the inside of the bridge, the structural parts of the bridge. Um, I do put those in as indicators, but I really rely on the work with the brush and the paint to do. Uh, most of that implied or illusion of detail that I get in my paintings. Then I'm really going to start with my raw sienna. The sky has got that warm golden glow to it. Raw sienna works really well for that. I'm painting right through these trees. I know they're going to be darker. I want a little bit of a warm glow on those, at least in the shady side anyway. I'm working really fluid. This is a key for this medium. Warm this up a little more, get some or more orange on there as if there's some orange, bright orange color on the. I'm going to paint down over the front. Raw sienna and actually paint it right through there because there's going to be some light coming through the background, through those openings as we paint them later and I want that to show so I'm painting right through it. I'm going to paint it onto the underside of the overhang and I'm just going to drop that in in certain places back there. Notice I'm well inside the pencil line because I know this is going to blend and shift as I drop this color into this wet area in this area where I think there would be some cast shadow on this part of these trees. Now we're going to go in here later and get some textural uh, marks that will show up probably the ends of the branches a little bit better, those raggedy ends where there's a few leaves left over kind of hanging on. We'll get that later. Some thick raw sienna almost by itself right into this little patch of foliage that's up here and then again some of this over here to the left. Certain areas will look like they're a little shadier. They're still going to be part of that light value area even as you put them on and you think boy that looks a little too dark for a light value area. Uh, they're going to dry lighter as you know and when the other colors and values are on the painting as well. All right. Uh, I like what I've got there. I actually think because most of my mid-value area is down here below, doesn't really touch those, I can go right into the mid-value area and get those colors in without really drying this. Just let this dry on its own and we can work on this uh, area in the foreground. Because I left this area wet, I'm getting the a little bit of a hint of some blending here, and it almost looks like weeds, doesn't it? Darker brown now, cooler even. Bring it down through here. Cast shadows down here on the ground from how the light is shining in from the right. and. There's water back in there, so I'm not going to, going to try to leave that for the moment. And I like those changes in color and value that happen, uh, again, when you allow this medium to be what it is, to be free, to mix and mingle. And I'm starting with the blue to keep that really cool. There's going to be some darker value back there, some cast shadow essentially. 
warm that up, create the bottom edge of the bank right over there. Notice that I'm making strokes now that are sort of diagonal. And what I'm trying to do is create a, a little sense of movement, if you will. I'm going to put some little stronger burnt sienna in there. And again, I'm, mi I'm mingling right into this already wet passage. And again, this is with and Dan 3 and Blue. I'm just making some diagonal marks that sort of set up the direction of that bank. It sort of tells us how that bank curves from flat up here, curves down to the edge of the water right there. The abutment on the other side would actually be reflecting in the water here. So I'm going to stop it kind of right there. Leave a little bit of white sparkle. That's a good symbol for water, so I'm going to leave that there. gray violet and make that really shady under that part of the bridge. So we want that red to show, and I'm using a really big brush. You don't have to use as big a brush. But in effect, the blue is cooling the color. It's also making it a little duller. The color would be a little bright if we put it on straight on that shady side of the bridge. It wouldn't be quite right. It needs to be cooler because it's in the shade, and it needs to be darker because it's in the shade. And while we're doing that, we can make some of these little marks like this. That's what those real simple pencil lines were for initially. And yes, I'm doing this wet into wet, and it's blending a little bit. And I'm putting this on good and fluid because I'm going to be ming mingling color back in there. And I'll show you. Like raw sienna. And I'm going to mingle that in. So I'm letting, again, the action of the medium to do some of the work for me. Raw sienna. Sort of mingle that right in along the top edge where we're kind of seeing in. And then we'll use some lighter versions of that same mixture to calm it down just a little bit. I'm using the side of the brush, and you can see I'm getting some rough marks there. Now it's showing white paper, but that rough texture gives us a little indication of what kind of material, material has been used for the roofing on the covered bridge. end, the right end of it, first of all I want a good sharp angle up there. I'm going to get it a little bit darker and I'm going to mingle this in hoping that I've still got enough water in there that this will mix and mingle together nicely. Strokes of paint going essentially along the edges or parallel with those edges. 
this time with more of the burnt sienna in it, so it's a bit more brown than blue or gray, really. There's some indications of fence posts and rails. I'm going to paint between those. Leave those light. And yes, you can do this. For small areas within any value area, you can leave little indications of other objects, shapes, by painting essentially negatively on those objects. They pick up the color that the base color that's on them, in this case that sort of golden color of raw sienna that I have in there. Use the side of my brush to indicate some, maybe some of the individual leaves. This is where we can work up to, if you're still seeing pencil line and you don't have marks that work up to it, this is where you can work up to that pencil line. Fill in areas that are a little awkward, right here is one of them actually for me. Some burnt sienna will be a bit darker shows some of that same character but as if the leaves in this case are really in the shade quality that may indicate that there's leaves there uh, at the ends of branches we can pull some of this darker color up start to indicate maybe the trunks and some branches of these trees back here. This all makes this work really, really simple. If you kind of take an approach like this, a pretty simple approach, but mark and actually symbols that tell the story of what's in your painting. In this case, these background trees. And I'm really doing this all at the same time. So I added the dark value here. I added the texture there. I'm pulling some of that dark value and from areas that are still wet, actually. I'm pulling that up and making them into the trunks of trees. I can f sort of straighten up my fence posts, fill them in, shorten that one. All really at the same time. I'll add a bit more value back here as if, again, there's some some hint of a cast shadow from the bridge onto that bank. And then I want to do the same thing under here, where there might be trees on one side of the river that are casting shadows onto the other side. I want to make sure I get a good overlap here, that those, where there's an edge that's in the near side, on the near side, for instance, the, along this abutment, I get a good solid overlap. I can straighten up the abutment there, Here's the edge of the hill. I mentioned putting a cast shadow on the abutment of the bridge. We can go back and do that. I put a stroke of paint then some clear water and I softened it up a little bit, let it blend back in. I'm real careful about the ground plane here, making sure that I've got that edge pretty firm. I bring that dark value up, a little bit of texture here. I think there's some burnt sienna on there, but here's an edge of the tree. I'm going to be careful to make a mark there and then pull that out, get some of that textural quality. And that helps me reestablish that edge a little bit. Maybe a little bit back in here. We're actually seeing some of those trees background trees through the foreground trees there as well. So a little bit of that texture right through there. Layer of, really it's burnt sienna, raw sienna mixed together. I'm going to be careful about the edge right there of the upper opening, the archway on the bridge. These pencil lines that indicate where there is structure coming through, I'm going to be careful about painting around those so I still get that cross hatching 
effect that's because those timbers are really set in there in that way. And this is careful work, but it needs to be nice and fluid work as well. That up here at the top, I'm mingling in a, in a mixture that's essentially the endanthrene blue and burnt sienna together. And again, nice and fluid. I'm letting it blend down. Actually, I'm encouraging it a little bit. Blend down into that lighter, warmer area. Indications of the backs of shadier sides of those beams. There's probably an edge here on the top edge of a beam that's down on the floor, near the floor. to get those to be essentially in the shade. Now let's do this one first. This one's in front of the other one. I want to leave a light edge here so that when I bring this down, we'll have good contrast there. I'm picking up some cerulean. That's too bright, but I'm going to blend it with some of these other colors and I'll reduce that color intensity a little bit. And Danthrene blue and burnt sienna mixed together. Same on this one. At the bottom edge, I blend this in. Clear water, let that tree, let those trees sit right down into the ground plane uh, by doing that. Darker color here, I think I need a little bit of contrast, a little bit here as well. And then this nice light edge I'm going to blend with clear water just so it stands out a little bit more but blends into the rest of the tree and I'm, this time I am going to paint along the edge of the tree I'm going to leave this layer off of the tree trees I should say I'm going to pick up some burnt scarlet, actually with a little bit of cerulean in, to cool it a little bit. And I'm adding that to this darker area as well. And while I'm doing it, I'm going to make some quick strokes with the tip of even this big brush. has got a nice point on it. As if there's, again, there's some cast shadows from some trees across the road or up the hill. Blend this in down here with some clear water. Again, pick up the excess that's going to be at the edge of the paper, and especially if you've got tape around the edge of the paper. And with the tip of this brush, I can lightly touch and make some raggedy looking marks. And again, those stand in pretty well for change the color a little bit, change the value a little bit, just for variety's sake. Maybe a little bit more of that mark right there. It's in shade. It's not cast shadow, really. It's shade. I'm going to leave the edge there light. This is mostly burnt sienna. At this point, I'm picking up colors off the palette that have mixed and mingled together. So it's mostly burnt sienna, but there's other colors, I think, in it. At the other end of the Spectrum up here near the peak. I want to darken a little bit, so I'm darkening. I'm just dropping some darker color in there, letting it blend. It's going to parallel this edge. It's going to be pretty deep because of the angle of the sun, and I think I want to bring it down and have it overlap. This part of the archway just a little bit.
you either want it to overlap there or you want it to not even touch the corner because if you do that then you've got a tangent which is a uh, really not something you want either. That's in danthrene blue. Then I mingled into the puddle where it's got some burnt sienna so it's a kind of a gray color. And start to show the siding. In this case we're going to say the siding is vertical. So I'll make some marks couple with this brush and I'm going to go back later with my rigger and make a couple others but we'll start with these. I'm going to darken this area of this uh, I can't remember what that structure is called in those covered bridges but it, again it turns in the wall faces out and then there's a corner and this turns in and I think it's there to protect uh, the structure that's inside from weather and damage As I'm looking, uh, it looks like this has dried a bit, but I, I think we do need some to indicate the trunks and branches of some of the trees. Use the side of the brush and create essentially groups of weeds. This is a textural mark. I'm getting rough texture out of it. It's very subtle. And I've done more than I usually do, but it's just to keep showing you the technique, how to do it, make that field really, really grassy. If you want to add a few individual branches, uh, not branches, pieces, weeds, what I would recommend is you put them in, in a place where they really point to your focal area. So get some down here and kind of leaning and pointing in that direction. Maybe bring a branch off of this tree, different angle, different direction for variety. And again, where it touches the tree, clear water, let it blend. Put another one maybe coming off there. A little bit more indication of trunks and branches back in these trees back here. on my rigger and then with a very light touch I'm going to add a little bit of texture indication of boards individual boards on the front of the covered bridge and again doesn't need to be every board you can even do it over here with a really dark color, this should show up in even this dark value area. Maybe some very small indications again of the structural, those structural pieces of the bridge that we're seeing just a little glimpse of. Maybe straighten up edges. We did that wet into wet there, so the edges blurred a little bit. This is a way that you can blend and straighten those marks. Give it a little better indication of what's happening over there. Again, without being too fussy about it. One of the ways to indicate a birch is to put these marks where the bark is peeling on those trees. It's just the easiest way to do it. Make them a little bit curved. Even put a wider mark like this. And again, I'm using the side of the brush and kind of gently to get those marks in. I've made more on one, the one that's closest to us, than the other. Uh, just because it's closer and it 
would seem to stand out a little bit more and that's why it's got more of these marks. There could be a little bit more separation between the trees here. I could put a darker edge right in there. Not that it's real important, but feels like it could be there. Blend it out a little bit. And there, actually, I think we're done. So this is our finished project. Again, it's our covered bridge, early morning, autumn light, striking this end of the bridge. Anyway, uh, thanks for sticking with me on it. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, see you again soon.